So I've entitled this um, talk today, A New Approach for Practitioners. There is always new information coming out in dermatophytosis, so some of this you'll say, well, we already knew this, but there are a few new bits that have come out, and I, I'd like to just um, tell you about uh, some of the talks that I went to at uh, Florence a couple of weeks ago. Um, one of them was given by Doug DeBoer, and some of his information has been included in this webinar. So um, the information that you're seeing today is obviously uh, mine, but we've also tried to infuse some of the uh, cutting edge stuff coming from Dr. DeBoer, who is one of the authorities on ringworm in the world. We couldn't get him here today, so you've got the second best thing, you've got me. Great. Okay, so what I'd like to try and uh, do today, my objectives really are that um, at the end of the, the webinar today, you understand the different types of dermatophytes, that you'll be able to recognize lesions, that you'll know the importance of fungal culture in cats. We really should, as part of our baseline database, with any cat with a dermatological problem, look to be doing a fungal culture. Realize that dermatophytosis is rare in, in dogs. Some people, uh, you know, see a, a lesion on a dog, a, a round lesion, which usually is an epidermal collarette, and they immediately think of um, dermatophytosis. Uh, and of course, that's that's not the case. So I'm hoping that if you are of that opinion, you will have changed your mind by the end of the of the lecture. Um, I'd like to go through some of the different treatment approaches, and there are different ones depending on the situation in the household. Is it a single cat? Are there multiple cats? A dog you would treat differently from a cat, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but I will want to spend some time on looking at this multi-cat household or cattery type situation. Really three groups um, of dermatophytes uh, that we can classify, and this is based on where they tend to live. So we have geophilic dermatophytes such as Microsporum gypsium, which are found in the soil, but which can infect animals. We have zoophilic ones, which really are found on animals and are transferred between animals and really, you know, can't live in the soil or don't do very well in the soil in the natural environment. And then we have anthropophilic uh, dermatophytes such as Microsporum arduini, which is a which is a human uh, dermatophyte and tends to just stick around in, in human skin. Obviously, uh, Microsporum canis, as you know, is zoonotic, so that can jump species as well. And some definitions for you. Doug DeBoer at the recent European Congress of, of uh, Dermatology, Veterinary Dermatology in Florence, uh, the definition he made of for dermatophytosis was an infection of the dead, keratinized part of skin tissue, pears, nails, and or stratum corneum with one of several superficial fungi uniquely adapted to living on the hair and skin. I think one of the key things there is to say that dermatophytosis is an infection of the dead tissue, you know, of the skin tissue, of the hair, of the nails, and as such is partly self-limiting by the fact that as the tissue is shed, quite often the infection is shed with it. This can, of course, lead to uh, a contaminated environment. But uh, most animals will get over ringworm, you know, if you give them enough time. Cats invariably get Microsporum canis, but we have noticed um, recently that there have been uh, Microsporum persicola recognized in the literature, Trichophyton, and also Microsporum gypsium. It's worth saying that occasionally we even see um, organisms such as Trichophytum rubrum, which is the human form that uh, causes athlete's foot. Now, when you get something like that back off a sample, you have to think that uh, that could be a, a carriage of an organism which the cat has actually caught from the human. So rather than the other way around, where cats tend to be blamed for everything that goes on in a household as far as ringworm goes, this is a case where it can go the other way. And, you know, it may just be a carriage of an organism. It's a carrier of it, but it's not really significant. You may be able to tell the owner that they need to go and get their uh, athlete's feet sorted out. Dogs get a number of species, uh, Microsporum canis, M. gypsium, M. persicola, 
and uh, trichophyte on mentagraphites. Humans can also get a number. Obviously, M. canis, we, we see that quite commonly in our practices where somebody's come in with a couple of cats that they've just acquired and they also have lesions on them. So it, it is well worth asking those sort of questions. Uh, you know, if you have a cat with lesions, you've obviously got to make them aware that it is a zoonotic disease and they must be, must, must be careful with that. And then very briefly, because I don't have huge amounts of experience in this, Horses tend to get trichophyte on, cattle get uh, trichophyte and varicosum and mentagraphites, and sheep also get uh, trichophyte and varicosum.